Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your week in nerddom movies edition for the week of June 4th, 2018. This week in movies, there's Willow 2 rumors. We've got uh, a new Simon Pegg and Nick Frost movie coming out. They're returning to their horror roots. Uh, a lot of stuff in movies. I feel like this is going to be one of our longest videos this week. So let's jump into the intro so we can hit that news. Quiet on the set. Rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Aubergenois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander Worf, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On Generally Nerdy. You're listening to... Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we can get into the news, guys, we have to get into this week's sponsor. This week's sponsor is the Your Mom Thinks I'm Advertiser Friendly shirt. Looks a little something like this. And it's the shirt that says, I don't do this for the ads. I do this for your mom. You can get this shirt over on the Teespring store, teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. That is the only place to get the your... <clears throat> That is the only place to get the Your Mom Thinks I'm Advertiser Friendly shirt. It's sponsored this entire week. Uh, I had to do shirt laundry, so I don't have my regular shirt on. I wish I had a Your Mom shirt, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm too poor to buy my own merch. <laughs> Again, you can get this shirt over on teespring.com slash stores slash generally nerdy. Now, let's get into the news. First thing out the gate, we're talking Willow 2. That's right, Ron Howard, the guy who gave us the original Willow, is talking about doing, is is in heavy talks apparently, about doing a, uh, a revisit to the world of Willow. After putting the actor in solo, I feel like the, he's going to be on board too. Um, I just, that's all we have is just Ron Howard saying, I want it to happen. We just don't know how he's going to make it happen yet. So let's kick on to the next bit of news. And that next bit of news is Slaughterhouse Rules. What is Slaughterhouse Rules? Slaughterhouse Rules is Simon Pegg and Nick Frost returning to their Shaun of the Dead roots. No, this is not a zombie movie, but it is horror comedy. So it's something that's funny and scary on purpose. Um, not just because it's bad, because Shaun of the Dead is arguably one of the best zombie movies ever so i it's it's going to be something along those lines uh simon said uh it's going to be really fun it's sort of a horror comedy sort of it's simon Pegg. come on uh it felt like the right thing to do uh for nick and i to have as our first collaboration with Stolen Picture. So it's a new production company. It's about a private school in the UK which sells off parts of its land to a fracking company and the fracking company then unleashes a subterranean mo monster that terrorizes the school. It's a big metaphor for the UK privatizing things and it's mixed up with some ridiculous sloppy horror. So it's right up our street, he says. Um, I feel like that's a little too heavy-handed, and I hope the politics don't get in the way of the humor, but considering how freaking polarized everything is these days, I don't see that happening. I have high hopes because Simon Pegg does do quality, quality stuff, so hopefully that will happen. But we'll wait and see. It's uh, no release on or no announcement on when production starts or when it's set to premiere or anything like that. But as we get those announcements, we will definitely talk about them here. Next up, we're talking about the DC Extended Universe version of Batman. Yeah, the fanfic Batman. That's the one. Actually, this is more about the penguin so we've talked about how batman is going through a bunch of script changes and the new director wants wants to make he, he wants to and is rewriting the script we kind of assumed that by now it was done and they were gearing up in pre-production getting ready for production itself and, and photography and so on and so forth but it seems he's still writing the dang thing um and 
potentially he's going to be putting the Penguin in the movie as the main villain. So goodbye, Joe Manganiello. Hello, Nick Frost, who we just talked about in the last bit. Nick Frost has said he would do it. Nobody's offered it to him or anything like that because we don't know exactly where the Penguin is going to land because either he's going to go in the Batman movie or he could potentially be going into Birds of Prey. One of the, remember we talked, there's a, there's like three or four different scripts floating around for Birds of Prey and they're just trying to land on one. In one of those scripts, the Penguin is the villain. So if, if he doesn't get put into the new Batman, he's going to get put into, likely going to get put into Birds of Prey, which is interesting. I don't know if the Penguin is the villain you want to really dig your heels in on is it like sure he's okay as a secondary villain but as your primary villain yeah it brings back fond memories of Danny DeVito and Michael Keaton but there was still a secondary villain in that movie there were two villains sharing the spotlight and even freaking Christopher Walken getting in on the action there for a little bit so even that wasn't a, a primary. And in, in the Arkham games, he was tertiary even. So it's, I don't, I don't, I don't believe Matt Reeves is going to, if he puts Penguin as a villain in his movie, I don't believe Penguin is going to be the only villain in his movie. He could take up most of the screen time, but I feel like there's going to be something behind the scenes, someone behind the scenes, maybe, hopefully, Deathstroke, uh, kind of orchestrating things for Penguin, just because Penguin is kind of one of the weaker of Batman's rogues gallery. But that's just my take on it, so you guys let me know. Let's talk about it in the comments. Next, real quick, we're talking about Wonder Woman 2. Officially, the name is either Wonder Woman 84 or WW84. I feel like it's going to be Wonder Woman 84, but we don't know. Johns teased it on his Twitter. They released out, uh, the artwork, which you're seeing right about here. And they gave us a set release date of November 1st, 2019. We also got... Uh, I don't know, I, I must have missed this because it was talked about in all of the articles I found this in, like it was already announced, but Chris Pine is returning as Steve Trevor. Um, and then we all already know that the villain is going to be Cheetah, played by Kristen Wiig. So that's what we got for Wonder Woman. Next, we have an epic announcement for The Crow, and not epic in a good way. It would seem both the director, Corin Hardy, and Jason Momoa have left the project. That's kind of big freaking thing because if you follow the link, cards on the right side. If you follow the link in the card, uh, th you'll get this will take you to the panel discussion where James O'Barr was talking about how, in his panel from Dink how Jason Momoa. This was kind of Momoa's baby. He was the one pushing for this to happen, and now he's leaving the project. That seems pretty significant. I, and there's no real definitive reason for why he's leaving, just creative differences, which doesn't tell us anything because, again, this was his baby. So it had to have been something pretty epic. But yeah, so hopefully, here's, here's, here's the thing. Denver Comic Con is happening in just under two weeks. So maybe, because I'm getting media passes, maybe I can slip in and ask Momoa why he's left the project. Because Momoa was just announced. It was the very last announcement for, uh, uh, yeah, you know, the thing and the stuff. Denver Comic Con. That's all we got for The Crow, but that's kind of a big thing, right? Next, we're talking The Fast and the Furious. Oh boy, please just let this franchise die. Uh, it, but it's not, it's not showing any signs of slowing down. Matter of fact, it's ramping up because this is not an actual Fast and Furious movie we're talking about. This is called Hobbs and Shaw. So The Rock and Jason Statham are getting a spin-off movie in this universe where they're playing their, their characters from the last two Fast and Furious movies, three Fast and Furious movies. Um... It's going into production this September, and it's going to be in theaters August 2nd of next year, which means it's going up against X-Men, uh, <clears throat> or New Mutants, rather. They took the X-Men part off of it. It's going up against New Mutants, so here's to hoping that New Mutants is fantastic so that they can stop making money on those Fast and Furious movies. Oh, boy. 
Next though, we are talking about Spider-Man Homecoming 2, things we already know. Tom Holland and the original director, or the Homecoming director, John Watts, are returning for the sequel. Also, Marissa Tomei, Zendaya, or Zendaya, whatever, and Michael Keaton will be returning to reprise their roles. Jake Gyllenhaal is currently in talks. It has not been signed yet, but is in talks to play Mysterio. Those are things that, we didn't talk about Mysterio before. I just saw that it was a thing, so I apologize, but now we know it's a thing. But we just got another round of Reddit leaks talking about rumors. So these are all unconfirmed things from Reddit, so really take it with a grain of salt. The movie title is going to be Spider-Man Field Trip. It's going to play, take place after Avengers 4, uh, where and, it, and Peter and his friends are going to head to London, hence the field trip, uh, to do something, uh, uh, a conference hosted by Stark Industries. Tony Stark has died, so we can expect that in, in Avengers 4, I would imagine. And uh, he created a groundbreaking invention before he died. Mysterio will be the master thief and illusionist that steals it. Thus, Spider-Man and his amazing friends have to fight to get it back. Uh, the film will also potentially be laying the groundwork for a future big bad in the MCU uh, as a greater as a greater thing, as a the, the bigger picture. So. I feel like even if this is half right, this could be very interesting. Um, it, I, I, I believe Tony Stark is going to die in Avengers 4 because Robert Downey Jr. just doesn't want to do it anymore. Even though at one point he said, and we've talked about this, he said, if I could do nothing but Iron Man and uh, Sherlock Holmes movies for the rest of my career, I'd be happy. I, maybe, maybe that's not the case anymore, but... Uh, the, these are all rumors. Hopefully, we will start getting some of these cemented in as we get closer to pre-production and the production on the Homecoming sequel. And then, our last bit of news has to do with Star Wars. Two Star Wars movies, to be precise. We got quasi-confirmation oh, last week about Kenobi being the next movie in the series. But we also got a little bit more cemented from Ray Park. This past weekend at Comic Palooza was talking about, yes, absolutely, Kenobi is going to be the next movie that comes out, and then we're getting Boba Fett. Is that implying Darth Maul is going to potentially be in both of those movies? Or is Ray Park just working on Kenobi? Because we got this week also, we got confirmation that Simon that uh, Simon Kimberg is going to produce and write the Boba Fett movie, and uh, alongside James Gold, who is going to write with him and then direct. So Simon Kinberg has written pretty much every X Men movie, uh, save for about two or three. James Mangold uh, did Logan, and no further explanation needed. There you go. Uh, that's, that's set though. So both of these movies are somewhere in production. Uh, Park seems to think that they're further along in production for Kenobi than they are for Boba Fett, which would make sense because if we're just now getting announcement of writers, then they can't be too far along with Boba Fett. But if they're working in pre-production, like we were talking last week or the week before, for Kenobi, then we're about to go into production. So it all kind of adds up. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Star Wars. But that, guys, is where we're ending this week's episode. Thank you very, very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down low. If, though, you want to go deeper in the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place to get all of the freebies and find the merch links and the social media links and get your nerdy swag. There's also a Patreon page, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. You can sign on for just a dollar a month. I feel like I give away uh, quite a bit for that dollar a month. So go check it out, generally nerdy on Patreon, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you're new to the channel, click the subscribe button. If you like the episode, click the like button. 
If you are falling behind in your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, always, always remember, guys, that if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.